Okay, today I'm going to talk about Hardware Info 64, a program you guys have been telling me to use forever, and I have finally started using it, and you know what? You guys were right. It's great. It's awesome. It does everything I want it to do, and it was there all along, and so were you guys telling me to use it. So anyway, today I'm going to show you guys how to set it up, how to kind of configure it for what you guys want to see. Um, if you want to start benchmarking your own stuff, it's the utility pretty much everyone's using for benchmarking and getting all those cool graphs and stuff, so don't be fooled by all these graphs thinking it's like super hard work. It's really not. You just push a button and then... Today's video is brought to you by the new, really super cool Sense Melty Connector shirt. You know, paying tribute to one of the best designs that's clearly ever existed. And if you don't like the Vaporwave colors, we've got our OG gray and red colors available now. So get yours by following the link in the description below. Nice. Ow, I have a thigh cramp. <laughs> All right, so Hardware Info 64, HW Info 64. It's a free utility as long as you're not using it for commercial purposes, which means, you know, if you're using it to keep an eye on data centers and things like that or whatever, you have to pay for it. Otherwise, it's completely free. Um, I tend to use it, and by the way, I'll try, I won't put a link down below, actually. You can get it from a few different areas. I don't want to DDoS any hosting sites by accident, but the information is easy. Look up HW Info 64. Um, anyway, as you can see right here, there's a sensors only mode, and that's what I tend to run pretty much all the time. There's a settings when you first log, before you even open the program, you can change things. If the theme looks weird or different, um, if it detects that you're using a gigabyte board, it automatically loads the gigabyte Auris um, preset, which just makes everything orange and black instead of blue and black. And then, whatever. It's, it's just an Auris integration, I guess, apparently. Uh, make sure everything's fully updated, and for the most part, I leave everything pretty much standard. Um, I don't do minimize on startup or keep on top or any of that sort or auto start. I just leave everything factory. I want to be able to start it myself. Every single sensor that exists in your system will be available for you to see. Now I have a bunch of stuff that I closed or hid because when I'm doing certain benchmarking and I'm dealing with the spreadsheets at the end, I don't want literally 500 columns that I don't need to use. So I'll turn on and off things that I want to look at. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So obviously we have an Intel 13900 or 1400K on here so we can see all of our cores and vids. So right now, if you were doing any sort of Intel testing and you're concerned about your CPU and what your voltage and stuff is going to, you can keep an eye on all that right here. If you're not sure what something is, if you just hover over it, it'll give you a tooltip. So voltage requested by particular core, not the voltage really supplied by the voltage regulator. So you can see right there, there's a difference. That's just simply saying, what is the CPU saying to give me? So if you wanna know what the actual voltage being supplied is, you would kind of have to do that on a hardware level, like to see what the true voltage is, because software reporting always has some variance in there versus what actual voltage is making it down the rail through the VRMs into the uh, the CPU. And that's why certain motherboards have those headers that you can touch a multimeter to to actually see. Uh, Buildzoid uses an oscilloscope for that. You can um, you can do that through hardware level. Right now you can really get an idea of just how much crap you can look at. Uh, okay, well, apparently the computer didn't like me saying crap, whatever. Um, I mean, you could, well, you could even see things like, so for instance, if you're on a laptop, you could even see what your battery health is. All that stuff is reported. If you have a UPS hooked up to your system and your UPS has one of those um, like sensors hooked up to the computer to be able to warn you or whatever to say, hey, your battery is getting low or your battery health is low or whatever, and it has a sensor that's available to your system to see, Hardware Info will see it. It can see literally everything, even things that are invisible to other software scanners or sensor scanners that usually you would think you could see everything. Let me give you an example right here. Um, Here's our smart drive. This is a crucial P5 2000 megabyte um, NVMe. You can see right here, the drive life is at 100%. The drive availability is spare. I don't know what that is, 100%. The drive has failed. No, well, that's good to know. Drive warning, there's no warnings. And then the total writes is how many times or how much data this drive has written to itself and over itself. 7.5 terabytes, that's gigabytes right there, 7,569 gigabytes. And we have read 12.7 terabytes off of that drive. And we can even see the, the temperatures on it. So if you're wondering if your SSD is getting hot, you know, if you're wondering if any of the stuff you're doing or if you suspect that maybe the little cooler or whatever on your drive isn't working well, you can actually see what the drive temps and stuff are. Uh, so that's all the smart information. And then down here, you can see this is the actual information since we've started the software. It's only, it's, uh, only read 1.8 gigabytes of data. It's only written 324 megabytes. That's my game drive. Um, GPU, this is where things get kind of cool. And we'll go back to CPU in a minute. You can see so much more GPU information than you typically can ever see. So we've got our GPU temperature. 
We've got our memory junction temperature. That's our max, you know, where our, our memory temp actually is. Our GPU hotspot temperature and where our GPU thermal limit is. So we can see if we hit 83C with this RTX 4090 Founders Edition, we will start to throttle. So it's nice to be able to see where we are and we can kind of keep, a, keep tabs on where we are with that. Um, we can even see right now what our GPU core voltage is and our rail um, statuses. GPU rail powers, this is the interesting one right here. Back when we were dealing with all the RTX 4090 melting connectors and stuff, when um, you know people were kind of keeping tabs on their GPUs, trying to make them fail like we were doing, um, this is a way that you could keep tabs of what the actual wattage draw is. Obviously, we see our core clocks. Uh, I don't even know what a crossbar clock is, but it's there. I've never really heard of a cross. I'm not, I, I don't know much about the architectures when it comes to the power delivery and stuff and the way that the GPUs are designed, but there's a crossbar clock and you can now see that. So there you go. I, you guys now can see everything that it can see. Let's talk about ways to set this up. So what's cool about this is you can see whether or not we're thermal throttling on our, on our CPU. So let me just sort of start like a, I don't know, an R23 test right here. Well, obviously we're at 61C right now. Clearly we're not thermal, thermal throttling. But if you thought you were thermal throttling and you look at this and it says no, then guess what? You're not thermal throttling. So this is really an awesome tool for anyone that's just super nerdy. And like, I wanna know every little bit of detail that's happening. And you can start you know, playing around with your own stuff, start you know, doing some A-B testing with settings on your system to really see what's happening here. It actually has its own on-screen display or OSD. I'm not gonna show you right now how to actually utilize the OSD. It's not that hard. I mean, if you were to go into the configure sensors, there's a whole OSD tab right here. And then this is where you can turn on which features you do and don't want to be shown on the on-screen display. You would just enable it. You know, you would go in here and sort of set up the perimeters of the charts and stuff you wanted to show. And it would be just be like MSI Afterburner where it would show up on the screen. The nice thing about the OSD built into Hardware Info versus my um, MSI Afterburner is the fact that MSI Afterburner um, doesn't see as much as Hardware Info does. So Hardware Info, you could make a very clean UI that would actually be able to show more data. Now the cool thing is, let's say you're just a diehard after MSI Afterburner fan, and you're like, I wanna use MSI Afterburner's OSD. The cool thing is you can enable Hardware Info's DLL in to MSI Afterburner and RTSS server so that you can get this info to show up in MSI Afterburner. So it actually incorporates that pretty simply, uh, pretty easily. Also too, when you're on the main general page, you can see right here global in milliseconds. This is how fast the data is being updated on the chart. By default, it's set to 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. We use 1000 milliseconds because we don't want to interfere with our tests by having the hardware info pull the CPU and the GPU and all these sensors too quickly. That could lead to extra latency when it's doing tasks, which could interfere with benchmarks. We find that 1000 milliseconds really doesn't affect the benchmarks at all. But if you were to make it like 100 milliseconds, that would be a problem. So if we were to set this to like, say right now, 100 and hit OK, or set, you have to hit set or it won't save. Now look how fast it's updating. <laughs> but if you want to incorporate it with MSI Afterburner slash RTSS server, then there's something you're gonna to have to actually enable in here first. Um, so you go over here to the general tab and then we would do main settings. And then you need to check this box right here that shared memory support, 12 hour limit. Now that 12 hour limit's in place for the free version. If you're using a commercial version, version I think it's probably unlimited. Um, and it tells you right here exactly what it does. So it says, it just enables sharing of this sensor data with other applications. That's all that that's doing. Um, we can enable that, hit okay. We can open MSI Afterburner, hit the little cog. Depend now your layout may look different. So obviously this is just based on the current UI that I have set in the settings. Go to monitoring and then right here on active hardware monitoring graphs, click the three dots. And then we can enable hardware info .dll. Click the check mark. This is a mistake people tend to make a lot. They highlight the bar. I just did it actually a second ago uh, and don't hit the check mark. So it doesn't check mark by default. Um, you just wanna make sure that that's selected. Hit okay, hit apply, hit okay. So technically now we should be able to start inputting data into RTSS's uh, monitoring and then we would be able to uh, go in here and start basically sharing information for Hardware Info 64 to RTSS and MSI Afterburner so we could use their OSD if we want. Now I'm not gonna do that today. What I am gonna show you is how to also kind of do a data log and then how to enable frame rate. Because one of the biggest things that's important I think for a lot of people too when they're doing benchmarking is not just gonna be like CPU wattage, CPU power draw um, in terms of you know not just watts but 
amps, because amps is another big thing when it comes to Intel. Obviously our GPU and benchmarking of games and stuff, if you want to start really kind of keeping an eye on what your frame rates and stuff are looking like, um, especially if you're, if you're logging, then we need to enable frame rates inside of um, hardware info. You'll notice there's nowhere here where it shows frame rate or anything. And the reason for that is you have to have RTSS going first for hardware info. And the reason for that is MSI Afterburner is going to be asking hardware info and vice versa for, hey, information, because right now they're sharing information. So if I launch MSI Afterburner right now, it's not going to show up because I actually did a little refresh, but it's not going to show up. However, if, I, if it's not showing, um, we can just close hardware info, relaunch it, hit start, and then if we scroll back down to our GPU section, here is our uh, frame information right here. So we got frame rate 1% low, 0.1% low in frame time. So if you're ever wondering how anyone that's showing benchmarks and stuff or charts are showing how they're getting the 0.1% or 1% or even the frame time, which is the time in the milliseconds it takes to generate that frame, which is really just a measurement of uh, how many frames are drawn in one second, you know, divided by each other. That's how you get the milliseconds essentially because um, you have 1,000 milliseconds in a second, so how many frames are drawn divided by that one second basically will get you, by the 1,000 technically, will get you the milliseconds usually. But I digress. You don't have to do the math because it'll do it for you. Now right now nothing's happening because there's no game hooked. So if I wanted this to start showing up right now, um, let me go ahead and just launch a game. And one other setting we have to get going before we actually start Cyberpunk here um, is we need to go back to our... Um, on-screen display, we can click more, that'll also bring up RTSS right here. And then we need to go over here to setup. And then we gotta scroll down to enable benchmarking mode. So we have percentile buffer right here as well on the same chart, it's unlimited and ring. The thing to keep in mind is unlimited is going to calculate the 1% and 0.1% lows based on the time from the time you start the app in this instance, which is hardware info and RTSS. So right now, if I'm not on the foreground on the game and it's not sitting here rendering anything, that's gonna be zero. It's gonna be a zero, which is then going to probably give us a very, very ridiculously inaccurate 1% and 0.1% low. So we can set it to ring if we want, which basically means it's gonna, like every five seconds, it's gonna sort of refresh that number and give us what the 1% and 0.1% lows over the last five seconds were. So you have to kind of, if you're doing any sort of benchmarking or you're keeping data for yourself, keep that in mind. Any time you spent right now, like the game is running down here, it's not currently hooked at the moment, but the game is running down here. And if I tab out and I still have the monitor going, it's gonna completely screw up the averages basically for frame rate, 1% and 0.1% lows. I'm just gonna leave it on ring right now so you guys can see it update and change. All right, so now that I have the game going, RTSS automatically hooked with hardware info. And now you can see I'm getting my frame rate of 210 FPS. Um, you can see my 1% low is 161 FPS. It's actually pretty good. That means the lowest 1% Percent? The lowest 1% of the frames drawn uh, since polling is at 106, now 163, 164. It's not bad. And then the 0.1% lows are 148, 120. So these are actually really good numbers, to be honest. Um, and then you can see the frame time. It's only taking 4.5, 5.4, 5.0 milliseconds to draw the frame. So when I'm doing the temperature over time charts and the voltages and all that sort of stuff, this is the utility that we're using. Now, the cool thing is, I can come in here now and I can hide things. Let's say you're just like, I don't care about all this throttling stuff. I can shift click the things that I don't want, right click and then say hide. I can also disable logging, which is neat because I can make it show, but if I don't want it to show in the log, that's a neat feature too. So you can disable logging on the items that you don't want to show in the CSV or the comma separated values table, which is what you throw into Excel to be able to create the charts and stuff. Then you can, you can either hide them entirely, which means they won't show up on the chart and they won't take up the space here or disable logging for them where they'll show, but then they won't log. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and say hide on that. I'm gonna do the same thing here with all the core throttling stuff. I'm just gonna get rid of all of this and just hide it because I like a nice clean layout. Now you can set a hotkey for um, sensor tog or logging if you want. I'm not going to turn that on because I don't like the fact that if you use the hotkey to start the recording, it doesn't prompt you to name the file. One of my biggest favorite features about logging with Hardware Info 64 is the fact that if you hit click right here, the little, the little page, it looks like a little Excel spreadsheet with a plus sign, start logging, it immediately brings up the locations and stuff. Like, where do you want to save it? Fine, I'll save it in documents right here. And I'm going to call it 
I don't know, um, HW Info 64 demo, right? And it's automatically gonna be a CSV. As soon as I hit save, the log will start. So boom, it now turns into an X. I'm now in here logging. I'm in here logging the game. So I'm gonna be like, la, 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 la. Now if I wanna keep an eye on my frame rates and see what the performance of my CPU is, this is also too the type of logging that we do if we're trying to figure out why a particular piece of hardware is maybe underperforming. For instance, this is stuff that we're actually kind of dealing with right now on our benchmarks between um, the 9000 series and our regression testing on Ryzen CPUs versus our Intel CPUs. We saw a pretty severe performance differential between Cyberpunk 2077 and Borderlands 3 on AMD versus Intel. So I can basically use both of these logs to see everything that's happening with the system to try and identify any sort of bottlenecks or any sort of um, inefficiencies or something in the system to say, hey, there's something we did wrong versus there's just an architectural engine issue between those titles and these CPUs and stuff. And then I can take that data and send it off to other influencers or, or other tech YouTubers and say, hey, can you look over this data and see if you see something I don't? Actually doing that right now um, with a, another YouTuber. And we will talk about that in the future. But anyway, it allows us to be able to actually get more information than, hey, I'm running the test. The benchmark says I'm getting such and such. And as long as all the settings are identical between both systems, which we currently have, this is about the only way we might be able to identify if there's a, a glaring problem with the platform versus a setting or just the nuances of the platform itself. Anyway, so once we're done, we can come over here and just click the little X and that's it. Anyway, extremely powerful tool. Anytime I talk about monitoring tools for a long time, you guys have been like, Hardware Info 64, why, why are you doing this the hard way? Use Hardware Info 64. And Libre Monitor was one that we were using recently that I liked the open source aspect of it. And a lot of you actually took our suggestions and went to GitHub and got the source code and developed for it and pushed it forward, which is a community-based project, which is what I love about that sort of stuff. Um, it's nowhere near as powerful as this though. So anyway, there you go, Hardware Info 64. You guys have been asking me about this for a long time. Um, like I said, our charts that you've been seeing lately um, are basically being generated with data that we're using from here. If I was to take a look, if you guys are curious what that CSV actually looks like, um, this is where you have to basically know what you're doing when it comes to like Excel. You get a lot of data. So anyway, there you go. For a lot of you guys that have been asking me like, why aren't you using this? I don't know, I'm stubborn. You guys know this by now, but it's on all our systems now. It's gonna be for the, the near future. Well, until something better comes along, which will be really hard to imagine. I, I can't imagine this not continuing to develop and it always seems to support the platforms that we throw it on. Laptops, desktops, AMD, Intel, Nvidia, it all shows up. Things that you normally wouldn't even think you have visibility of, it's all there. So for instance, um, if you had a GPU that was maybe acting really weird and it was like clocking weird and the temps look okay, you could see maybe your hotspot temps are out of control, which means you have some paste missing from parts of your die or it cracked or something, and then you start having hotspots. And then the hotspot temps are what's leading to throttling. And you might just look at the visible temperature that shows up on like MSI Afterburner or something and realize, oh crap, it is like a 45C delta between edge temp and hotspot temp. And that's why you're throttling. So being able to see this sort of data is extremely important. All right, thanks for watching you guys. As always, we'll see you in the next one.